Her speaker is a Peter Peter Tony. Is, did I pronounce your last name correctly? More or less Tony, uh, but Tony's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Peter here is actually um, Peter here is actually famous for tweaking. He's, he's probably actually done okay among the people in this room. He's you know his software has probably has probably reached more people than any of other and other software that he's actually written, in, well, at least in terms of open source community. So he's probably the most foremost person, um, open source developer here, um, at SB Pearl. Okay. Okay. So anybody, right now, Tony, take it away. Okay. Tell us about regular expressions. Okay. So before I start, uh, some questions. So if you look at this string in the middle here, who thinks this is totally utter gibberish? <laughs> okay. uh, who looked into it and uh, thinks, uh, well, I've seen that, but I don't really understand? <laughs> okay. And who thinks, well, this is old hat? Uh, bring me more. Okay. Okay. So we, uh, as I expected, so it's maybe a third, a third, a third. Um, and so the presentation uh, I prepared, well. I intended to prepare was to address everybody. Uh, my time right ran out, so I have a nice presentation for the beginners to read it part, and then for the remaining uh, advanced stuff, uh, we will poke around some stuff. So I have plenty of material uh, for advanced stuff as well. So just quickly about myself. Uh, so as Lambert uh, mentioned, I started Twiki over 10 years ago. I was actually working for a tiny company, Austrian-based company in Cupertino. I was hired to start an R&D group for the company. Uh, then uh, between my interview, my first day of work, the CEO changed. The new CEO didn't like the idea of starting an R&D group. So then uh, I basically had a job at the company, but no position. And so then we agreed that I would do customer support management for the company for one year. Okay, so all my background is engineering, so I was a little bit under-challenged. And then uh, also one issue was like quite a complex product the company was selling and the uh, software factory was nine hours time difference away in, in Salzburg, Austria. So then uh, I thought, well, okay, let's deploy a knowledge base for customer support. Then, uh, well, okay, so these commercial knowledge base solutions, they were nice about uh, categoriz categorizing content, uh, search, but uh, I thought very weak in uh, the collaborative stuff, like working with content. And then I thought, well, Wiki is a really strong use collaborative stuff, but like all the structure. So then that, that was basically the teaching factor to start Twiki. And so I won't talk about Twiki tonight, uh, but uh, it did uh, just give you an idea. So also in Twiki internally, uh, a lot of re is a regular expression. So we uh, heavily use a regular expression. We also see some examples there. So originally I'm from Switzerland, uh, uh, lived in Japan a couple of years now, over 10 years uh, in the Silicon Valley. Okay, so conventional way to process text. Everybody here is probably familiar. So first of all, uh, why do we want to process text? Uh, if you do web applications, but also uh, desktop applications, you always want to validate input. Uh, you want to change the text from one format to another format. Uh, in Twiki's case, it's we want to change it from the TML, Twiki markup language, into HTML. Um, maybe you want to extract some snippets of text. Uh, maybe you want to test for a certain uh, string that's in a larger piece of text. So there, there are many uh, uh, reasons why you need uh, uh, text processing. Now in procedural Perl, uh, there are a number of functions and uh, I don't need to go into details like index, like a point of position of a certain character or substring that you're looking for in another string. Uh, extract a substring, uh, length of a string. You can split the string into an array, uh, do some manipulation and join it back together. There's a whole bunch of other ones as well. And then, of course, there are many C10 modules as well. So we won't cover this today. Then, of course, there's also the whole way uh, of string manipulation. So there's a string class. Uh, you, you can instantiate it. Uh, you get the length. Uh, you get the uh, character, the add, uh, 
index uh, of a certain string within uh, that uh, string object, etc. So now, what are regular expressions? So this is just a copy from uh, Wikipedia. So a regular expression is a specific pattern that provides concise and flexible means to match, meaning specify and recognize strings of text, such as uh, particular character words, patterns of characters, etc. Um, so the, I'm not sure if I have it. Yeah, so historically, um, we had the so-called regular sets, which is kind of a, uh, not really a programming man, but a formal definition of, uh, uh, of a string of text. Um, maybe, uh, let's see, we could quickly go, yeah, that's this regular language, maybe one, yeah, this one here, it's maybe interesting. So, uh, there is a so-called uh, classes of Kromsky, hierarchy, which uh, categorizes content in these different things. So we have content that uh, adheres to a regular language, and a little bit more loose, we have context-free uh, con uh, language, then we have context-sensitive, and then uh, like a recursive and enumerable, can I spell it, <laughs> um, uh, text or way of uh, representing text. And so the regular expressions that we will cover today, uh, that's in this regular part, although each implementation, each language implementation of the regular expression uh, has some extensions that make it a little bit more than the pure regular part that you see here in that smallest box, uh, smallest circle. And also, if you have questions, please at any time, let's make it interactive. I don't, uh, I don't consider myself an expert in uh, regular expressions, although I've been using it for over 10 years. So if you see, uh, if you want to chime in, uh, please be welcome to do that. And if you, if you find an error, so I uh, made this presentation fairly quickly, there might be an error uh, in some, some places, so please point it out as well. Okay, so why do we want to use regular expression versus the procedural or the object-oriented way of processing text? Uh, well, first of all, of all uh, everybody already knows wildcards. And so you can think of uh, regular expressions just wildcards and steroids, souped up uh, wildcards. So a dot star, no, star dot txt in a regular expression becomes a, a dot star backslash dot txt and a dollar sign. And we will uh, go into details to learn uh, what that means. And uh, at least for me uh, personally, uh, for the Twiki project, uh, the, the most uh, important reason to use regular expression is that you can process a large amount of text over and over again. And that's in connection with the speed. So it's extremely fast. So that the Twiki rendering engine has, I don't know, probably several hundred uh, regular expressions that scans over the text as multiple uh, replaces. Uh, here, uh, you don't need to understand what it means. This is just a small code snippet uh, from the Twiki rendering engine. And let's look just the last one here. So we have <coughs> the text. Uh, we scan and identify a, a TML uh, for like a header written in TML, a, a heading text heading, and then we change it into the CGI uh, uh, heading. Uh, no, sorry, uh, that's a horizontal rule. So we scan for a horizontal rule, and then uh, the, the TML, we change it into the HTML for a horizontal rule. Okay. And then there's some modifiers, and we learn what that means. Uh, so basically, over the whole text, uh, we go over and over again. And just imagine there are uh, over 100 of these regular expressions and it's amazingly fast. Okay. So that's a, that's a key value that I have seen. Um, and of course, it's very powerful and flexible, but there is also a learning co uh, curve to get used to. Uh, anybody wants to chime in uh, why they think regular expressions are really helpful? Any more stories? <coughs> oh. 
emails out of the log or email addresses out of the log. Yes, no, no. so processing large logs, log files uh, to pull out email addresses, IP addresses, uh, maybe pull out an IP address and uh, feed it to a function to, to get domain name uh, or domain lookup, uh, etc. So that's a very good example. So why do other guys use regular expressions? Yes, uh, yes, that, that's a very good example. Uh -huh. So, uh, and especially with web scraping, it's not a full API, and if the uh, certain website changes the format, it might break. But the main purpose of web scraping is to very quickly just pull out something, and if it breaks, well, just fix it, and it fix very quickly. Right? That's a very good point. Uh, One of the s silly things we do with them is we um, convert prices. So on a website, if you see a price like, you know, dollar sign, five comma, three, four, three dot, whatever, mm -hmm. we have to convert that into a uh, floating point number. And there are modules to do that, but having a regular expression to do it is actually quite a bit faster. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's faster, plus also it's flexible because you have control over the regular expression. Well, and we deal with uh, a dozen different currencies, mm -hmm. and they all mark it up differently. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. yep. you validating input? Making sure someone's not trying to break your software. Yep. Uh -huh. That's very important. Uh, newbies frequently forget that stuff, so I'm guilty of that myself. Okay. Okay. So, um, how do we use regular expression? Before you understand uh, the intrinsics, uh, the syntax of regular expression, let's learn how we can use that in Perl. And uh, this is intended for beginners, so it's all old stuff for other folks. So you basically can test the string for a certain condition. So you can look for some stuff that's in the middle of the string, or at the beginning, or the end. Uh, uh, we can use the full power of uh, the regular expression to look for something and then do something if, if there's a match. Okay. That's uh, one of the primary use. And uh, well, there are two primary uses. Uh, one is like the uh, test for some uh, string or substring. And the second one is uh, to uh, test for something and replace that with something else. Okay. So it's like a search and replace. There are uh, a procedural functions for replacing content. There's an object-oriented uh, like methods that you can apply to a string. But with regular expression, uh, you have a lot more flexibility. And then uh, there is also the uh, split function, uh, where you, you either use a regular expression or just a written text, normal text, just, uh, as the delimiter. So this particular thing here says, uh, let's split the string on a comma. And in case there is some meeting space and, and trading space after the comma, like, uh, remove that as well. Um, and then there is uh, well other stuff as well, like pause. Let me just off the screen here. Uh, defining a regular ex expression string. Uh, Finding a string where you want to uh, um, quote the meta characters, which we will learn in a bit. So that's the primary use. Any feedback here, questions? Okay. So now the basics. Uh, in the presentation, I use fixed uh, font text for text that we are going to process. Uh, red color is the regular expression itself, and the green color is uh, uh, what we will, what we find, or what, uh, uh, what what we can match by applying a regular expression. Any colorblind people here? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, regular expression language. You're basically just uh, have, uh, saying that here I have a character followed by another character, followed by another character, and then uh, what, what type of character? There are lots of uh, uh, bells and whistles uh, that you can assemble this regular expression string that, we, that then you will apply it to another string. Okay, so uh, you have just regular uh, characters. So I want to scan for the character L, 
and here it just finds the first one and, and the regular expression en engine stops there and re uh, returns to L. Okay, so now we found L. Then if you apply the just continue like uh, for the next uh, run, it will find the second one, and so on. Okay. So that's a single character. Um, well, uh, the regular expression is a sequence of characters I, I just mentioned before, so that means uh, you can have any sequence of characters and just find that. So that means like multiple characters. So, so uh, I'm scanning now for O and R, and it scans here and finds it. Uh, in the middle of the word, word world. Okay. Then there's uh, so-called meta characters. They have special meaning in uh, regular expression, and uh, we will see in the next slides uh, what that means. But the point here is, if you want to actually look for a plus character, you need to escape it. Or if you want to look for a, a dot. Uh, then you just need to escape it. And you can do escape it with a backslash. And you see the backslash itself is also a meta character, so to escape a backslash is a backslash. So it's backslash, backslash. So it's pretty obvious. Okay. Uh, now we have uh, so, so called character sets, or sometimes also called character classes. Um, so what that means, like, I want to scan for a single character out of a few characters that I specify. So in this example here, we uh, specify, and that's done with the square brackets. So within the square, square brackets, uh, we have an O and an E. That means like the, when we scan over the text, uh, it stops at the first that it finds, uh, either one. So here it finds an E, and if you run again, uh, or continue to run, then it finds an O, and then the third O here. So then, um, maybe you want to match hello or hello, like a term word for hello, okay? So then, uh, I mean, like the, the, the full string. So I see here I made actually a mistake. Uh, so I'm, I expect an H, and then either an A or an E or an A, and then an LLO. And what it finds should be the whole world uh, word here. And since this is a wiki, I can fix that on the spot. A demo of the power of wiki. So that's uh, where are we? Hello. Uh, hello. So here we scan for the whole thing. So, so this whole presentation is just a wiki page, and uh, I can turn it into presentation mode by clicking this button here. It's one of the plugins. Okay. So now that is that is. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I want to do some PR for Twiki. <laughs> okay. So now, uh, we also can uh, specify a range of characters. So here it's just 0 to 9, but also can scan for A to Z if you want to, or any other range uh, within the, uh, the ASCII uh, sequence of the character, uh, of the character set of the, 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 that you currently, that's currently enabled in the system. So here we are scanning for any character, so it finds the first, uh, any uh, integer, uh, or digit, so it finds the three. Now, uh, we also can match uh, hex color. So we have a text, and somewhere in this text we have uh, this sharp FF4444. Okay, so with three hex uh, numbers. So to scan for this, uh, well, first we, uh, we scan for the hash tag here. And then uh, we scan either for uh, 0 to 9 or A to Z. Uh, and then, actually, is that right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we repeat the whole thing uh, six times. I don't know if you say A, yeah, since you know it's 
ADFs? Uh, say again? Why don't uh, yeah. you just say ADFs since you yep. don't say X? That's right. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Okay, I'll fix it later. <laughs> uh -huh. You're right. So here, uh, that's actually too loose. So you should uh, write A to F. Uh, and then if you want to make it case insensitive, either you apply a modifier for in case insensitive search, or you do A to Z in caps. And later we learn how we can shorten, shorten that. That's too much typing. So then, uh, you can negate uh, character set. So here we are looking for uppercase W, and for anything that's not uh, an X. So this caret sign uh, within that uh, uh, starting inside the square brackets indicates uh, it's a negative set. So that means like uh, it's a W, and uh, the next word is an O, so it is not an X, so it's, it's a match. <coughs> and then also non-digits uh, is simply uh, like this. It's pretty obvious. Yes? Um, are you going to mention uh, Unicode-defined sets? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're working with Unicode, it's more complicated. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now uh, there are so-called shorthands for character sets. And that's uh, with a backslash something, a single character. So backslash D matches a digit, so it's equivalent to the square bracket uh, 0 to 9. Uh, then uh, there is a backslash S, uh, which is white space, uh, backslash W, which is a word. And a word is defined as any alphanumeric character plus underscore. And then, uh, I'm actually not sure, anybody knows, uh, depending on the system configuration, does the word change to include additional characters or not? It depends on the... If the Unicode is enabled, it's actually the unfurled. If the string is Unicode, you will be mention any Unicode character. Uh -huh. And the same for slash D for any digit. So yeah. some languages have digits that are not 0 through 9. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those are all included in that too. But it depends on which version of Perl you're in, mm -hmm. how well it works. Yeah. So you want to be 512 or later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, so always devil is in the detail. <laughs> <coughs> OK. So. Um, so here we are span, uh, scanning for white space followed by a, a word character. So it finds the space and the uppercase W. So then we have special uh, character sets. So uh, slash backslash T is a tab. Uh, then we have backslash R and backslash N for character and line feed. Uh, then, uh, but line ending on, if you want to scan for line ending and you're on Windows, then you should scan for backslash R, backslash N. So they're platform dependent uh, things that you need to be aware of. Or if it's backslash get about R, it matches N in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good point. And uh, then uh, you also can match, uh, so if you don't know, uh, no, that's maybe a bad ex expression. But uh, any um, ASCII character number of uh, uh, you, you can use to uh, indicate a character. So the caret character here, uh, you can escape a write like this, or you can backslash uh, write it. And if you're on Unicode, uh, you can specify the full Unicode uh, X code. Okay, so the dot. So the dot basically matches any character, so single character, uh, except for line breaks. Okay, so if I scan for a dot, it uh, finds the first character, H. And then there are also switches or like modifiers uh, that you can tell to if uh, so to include uh, new lines as well. 
So the long version of a dot uh, on Unix, uh, yeah, or Linux, is uh, not newline. So based on the definition we wrote up there, and if you're on Windows, the definition of the dot is a not backslash r backslash n. And by the way, so the presentation will be also available on Twitter or actually it is already, but not linked yet. Uh, but I will link it from the home page. So if you go there tomorrow, you will see it. Okay. So now uh, this is like a regular expression uh, if you want to scan for the English or German version of hello, the word hello. And you don't want, you want it a little bit loose and it's just h dot l l o. Okay, so that uh, matches hello, matches hello, but also h uh, x l l o, any other characters as well. Okay, now we have also have anchors. So anchors don't match any specific character. Uh, they are just looking for a certain pos uh, thing within the string and just indicate a certain position in the text that you're looking for, investigating. Um, one is like if you want to match the very beginning of a string, so you use the caret sign. So if you scan for this, uh, the position uh, of uh, uh, it is basically in the very beginning. And then you can append some other regular expression stuff uh, to look from the very beginning. Um, and there's also multi-line uh, mode uh, with a modifier that you can enable so that uh, it matches also anything after any line break. And then the end of the string, oops, uh, that's a bug. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, should be a dollar sign. Uh, so if you want to scan uh, some, uh, the very end of, of, or identify the very end of the string, uh, you uh, indicate a dollar. So just a dollar by itself doesn't make much sense. Uh, usually you have something before the end uh, uh, to test uh, that something's at the very end. What you frequently do uh, is, well, if you have a long uh, piece of text, uh, maybe you want to make sure, especially for input validation, if you just want to make sure uh, that you have digits, uh, you could uh, use that regular expression uh, to ident identify digits. But there might be some garbage uh, before the digits and some garbage at the end. And uh, one option is just to only pull out the digits and throw away the other stuff, then you don't need to do anything. And you, if you want to, want to be a uh, strict with the user uh, and only allow digits and complain if uh, there's anything else, then you can uh, scan and start from the beginning, then scan for any digit, uh, and then terminate it with the dollar sign. Okay, so then uh, there's also a backslash B. So this backslash B scans for or in the identifies a word boundary. As we've learned uh, before, a word is not a word in the English sense, but the character that's A to Z or 0 to 9 or an underscore. And with the backslash B, you're indicating that you're either at the beginning or at the end of a word boundary. So the first time you scan uh, for a backslash B, uh, it's the very beginning uh, because that's where the word starts. A word character starts, then the next uh, four are also words, so the second time you run it, uh, you will be at the end of the O. Okay. And then there, there's like the opposite, uh, the capital B, like such capital B, so a match at every position where uh, backslash B cannot match, so it's just the opposite. Okay, now there's also a logical or, or the regular expression is called alternation. And that's uh, just a pipe sample. So I'm looking for dog or cat or fish. And if, if I have a string that I like cats and dogs, so it uh, finds cat without the S. And if I run it again on the same string, uh, then the second time it finds dog. 
Third time, it doesn't find anything. Then we have a repetition. So that's now the most useful stuff. And it's actually not too uh, complicated, uh, but you have to remember a couple things. So British versus American spelling, color or color. Uh, you can indicate that uh, if you scan for color and the U is one character and the question mark means whatever is before the question mark is optional. So zero or one instances of the character or character set uh, before the question mark uh, uh, can be there. So uh, then the other one is a asterisk which means zero or as many as you want uh, characters uh, or repetitions of that uh, character that's before the either character or character set that's before the asterisk. So if we scan uh, like teletype or HTML TT text slash TT so and apply this pattern here so we are looking for uh, angle bracket start either A to Z, A to Z in caps, followed by A to Z, A to Z caps, zero to nine, and then the star here means like that's either zero times or as many times as you want. Okay, so that means if you have the anchor tag, which is uh, 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 just an A, um, so and uh, then uh, the star means like it won't match, but uh, that's also allowed in, uh, because it's a star. So now uh, the color example again. So a plus matches one or multiple times. So if we scan uh, for the hash and then have a character set uh, 0 to 9 or A to F <laughs> uh, with a plus, so it just uh, expects at least one, so that's a F that we find here, and just continues until it, uh, there are no more characters in this uh, set. Okay, with this uh, we are not that exact, uh, so if, we are, if we have too many uh, hex digits here, uh, we might get an in invalid hex color. Okay. So this pattern is not uh, that good yet. So now uh, we have one more example here. Uh, so we have in the character set A to Z, A to Z caps, 0 to 9, and at least one of them. So it catches the A, the anchor tag, as an example. But what's the problem with uh, this string here? You can't start with a number. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so in HTML, it's, uh, there's no tag that, uh, that starts with a number. There are tags uh, that start with, a, uh, with an alphabetic character followed by a number like H1 or H1 heading, but there is no uh, HTML tag that starts with a number. Yeah. To be fair, it's a perfectly valid regular expression. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it won't do exactly what you want. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. And that's also actually a good uh, example of uh, gotcha. So you're designing regular expression. Uh, perfect. Uh, the program runs uh, as you expect, but uh, it, it does more than uh, than you expect, right? Or, or it doesn't catch everything that you expect, uh, that you actually wanted to uh, uh, catch. So that takes actually some time to get used to uh, these things. And with bugs like that, you'll either be getting zero output or volumes more than you expected. Uh -huh. Depending yes. Depending on what your bug is, even if your regular expressions are syntactically correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So from a practical point of view, do you test your regular expressions in the program, or do you test them independently of the program? Depending on what you're building, you test things as soon as you can. I'm wondering what people do, because I always find when I'm trying to write a regular expression, that it's kind of like orthogonal to the program structure. Mm -hmm. Normally, I have, I have a piece of code um, that is used for validating Mac addresses. Mm -hmm. So I started out and pinched a piece of code out of somebody's module. Right. Work with them. The first failure mode started to occur when we found how many different ways you could inappropriately use MAC addresses. Mm -hmm. So what happened then was the unit test got put up. Okay. 
to start testing the regex so that every time we could think of another way that this could fail, we would put it in the regex. And that was the first thing we did. Anytime something weird happened, we would add that new failure to the unit test. And then the unit test would tell me whether or not is that going to work? Yes, no. So uh, I was going to say another really useful thing is grep. Now, grep uses a slightly different syntax than Perl regular expressions, but you can often test out your basic regular expressions using grep, not just against whatever your input file is. But when you get into a little bit of complexity, grep and Perl separate and go their separate ways. Okay. But you can test Perl with one line or something. But yeah, you can yeah. do one-liners yeah. with Perl. Yes. Uh -huh. Grep test capital P. Yep. Oh, I haven't tried that with Perl right there. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, um, in Vim, you can use a slash V, and it'll use Perl regular questions then there's a, the SED, I still use SED uh, <laughs> uh, for command line processing and quick and dirty stuff. Uh, and that uh, regular question is again a little bit different. OK. Uh, Move on. So there are so more a little bit more repetition. The curly braces. So curly braces are really useful. So you can uh, test for exactly uh, or expect exactly a number of times uh, that you want to repeat. So here six times. So with this uh, example here, we have color uh, hashtag ff four 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 zero zero. So this is invalid. It's too long. Okay, but if you want to actually extract the, the, the color from this piece of text and uh, you want to make sure the color is valid and just ignore what, uh, if it is too long, then you can write uh, 0 to 9, A to F, and then uh, in curly braces 6. So it, it scans for exactly 6 characters. If you have 5, there is no match. If there are six, uh, it finds a six. If there are seven or eight, uh, it just takes the first six. But you could put the slash B in there, and that should... The backslash B? Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. right. So that's the next example here. So here, the uh, homework is we want to match any number between 1,000 and 9,999. So first, uh, we have uh, one character. The first character is a 1 to 9. So that's this one here. Followed by 0 to 9 exactly three times. Followed by the backslash B. That means it doesn't allow any other uh, word or non-word character uh, after that. So if, the, if it's too long number, uh, it's, it's not a match. And also, it starts with a backslash B. So that means uh, it has to start with, uh, uh, no, the stuff before the number has to be a non word. Here we have an example of uh, scanning for the TLD, top level domain of uh, a URL. So recently we have uh, .museum, uh, which is like six characters long. In the old days it was just two or three. Or, no, uh, four after that, they yeah, have .info. Uh, and so here we scan for a backslash dot, so that means like a period. Uh, we scan for just uh, characters, I mean like uh, ASCII, no, alphabet uh, characters, and uh, between two and six characters. Not more, not less. <coughs> and then followed by, uh, so your backslash slash. Uh, so we are, we are escaping the slash because the delimiter of that regular expression is a slash. Okay. And then uh, one more example here. Any number uh, between 1,000 and 99,999. Uh, so again, it's the first character is a 1 to 9 followed by a digit either three times or three digits or four digits. And again, uh, uh, you're anchoring it uh, against the word of the starting beginning. OK, so now the most fun part here. Uh, and uh, uh, many, uh, so including myself, uh, starting with regular expression, I didn't understand that. 
and got uh, unexpected results. So there's a so-called greedy and non-greedy uh, scan or repetition. So uh, the greedy repetition is just think of it, uh, use as much stuff as possible. And then the non-greedy or lazy repetition is just use as little as possible. So the greedy uh, example is uh, the angle bracket dot plus. So here, uh, well, you might want to scan for an HTML tag. So you think uh, angle bracket a dot uh, plus means at least one character. And then a closing angle bracket that will do it. But what you're actually doing is, uh, if you have it, uh, this text here, it will greedily scan for the very last uh, angle bracket, closing angle bracket it finds. So you're not uh, you're you're capturing too much, not what you expect. So then, with the question mark, if you add a question mark to a repetition, it means. Well, uh, scan for it, but be careful, uh, don't capture too much. So if we do that same thing now after the plus uh, question mark, then you see uh, it will capture just uh, the first uh, HTML tag. Um, so the question marks or the non-greedy repetition, there is a small performance impact. Uh, most cases, it doesn't really matter because uh, break expression is blazingly fast. Uh, but if you have an application uh, where, you, where you really want to look for performance and tune for performance, uh, try to avoid the non-greedy uh, repetition and uh, use other means. And so that's here uh, something that's not 100% identical but uh, kind of similar uh, results. So we scan for an opening uh, bracket. Uh, the question mark here, so it's an optional slash. So we account for like a closing HTML tag. Uh, and then we scan for anything that is not an opening or closing tag. And uh, plus at least one of them needs to be there. So, so this is faster than the uh, non-greedy repetition. Yes? OK, one more time. Uh, let's see, you got the backslash, forward slash. Can you re talk about that one more time for the audience? It's, uh, it looks kind of strange. It's but the, why is that uh, yeah, why is it that have to have a backslash yeah. there? And it just yes, okay, so uh, depending on how you define the regular expression, uh, so usually in Perl, uh, the default way that I define it is with uh, backslash. So regular string is with single quotes or double quotes. Uh, with uh, regular, defining the regular expression as well with single quotes or double quotes. But you can use the, uh, the normal slash, so not the backslash, to define it. A regular expression. So if you do that uh, and you have a, a, a slash somewhere in the, in the string, it will uh, generate a simplex error. So that, that's why you need to escape that. And in parallel uh, to, to define uh, or to define the start and beginning of a regular expression, uh, you can use other characters as well, like the type symbol, uh, five five, or even curly braces, uh, open curly braces, <coughs> close. Uh, uh, to define a regular expression, but if you have then curly braces within the string, uh, within the regular expression, then you need to escape that curly braces as well. Right, as well. Does it make sense? Yeah, you've actually got me more confused. So oh, okay. <laughs> if, you, if you use the pipe symbol, for example, if you use the pipe symbol to define the start and end of the regular expression, yeah. how do you Define A or B. Uh, then uh, you would choose a different one. <laughs> <laughs> For readability, if you if you're doing file system rejecting, doing all those backslashes for every slash that yeah. you're trying to match in cards. I do a curly brace to eliminate your regex. Yeah. And choose the one that's least likely to be in the pattern. Most places I've seen have a standard defined, huh. which is use slashes unless you have slashes inside the regular expression, mm -hmm. and then use curly braces. Mm -hmm. If you have both slashes and curly braces inside right. your regular expression, then comment it. <laughs> 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 
what you're doing. Right. Right. Uh -huh. So, okay. um, can you yes. uh, this this would match the closing tag as well. Uh, yes. So if you run this again, uh, so hold on, this one here. Yeah. If you run this again uh, on this string, uh, it finds the closing HTML tag because we have uh, uh, we allow zero or one. So the question mark is zero or one flashes. Wouldn't, wouldn't that match the same if you just didn't have the backslash forward slash question? No. No, it would match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it would. Oh, it match right, because you zero would catch it in the anything that's not an angle. Yes. Okay. Once again, the stuff within the square brackets. Of, okay. Explain one more time. What's that stuff within the square brackets? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So the square brackets uh, is a character set or character class. The caret means it's a negative set, so anything that's uh, that def that's defined in there, you're you're looking for anything that's not that. Mm -hmm. So, and we are indicating a square bracket start or end. So any single character that is not a start or end uh, bracket, and with the plus, uh, it's one or multiple. So if we uh, scan for the second time, we expect the start, uh, like the open bracket, this one here, we found this. Uh, we look, well, we allow uh, one slash. We found the slash, let's move on. Uh, we, uh, for the next character, it's a plus, so one or more. It cannot be a backslash or a, uh, I mean, a start bracket or end, end bracket. So it's a T, okay, let's move on. Next one is a T, okay, it's not a, a, what we forbid, we move on. And then uh, it's a, a closing angle bracket, and we specify not angle bracket, okay. So it's no longer valid, uh, so that means this part is, is done here, and we then uh, take most of the closing angle bracket. Yes? So they brought up a good point, which is the backslash slash question uh -huh. isn't necessary in this particular case because of the negative set. Uh, it would still match. Uh, it depends how you define a regular expression. So here I wrote the, the slash. It's not for all of them. Yes. Right. 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 But uh -huh. in, in this, so my question is more about speed. So right. in typical regular expression fashion, if I was to specify more things in my regular expression versus a less, a smaller set, which one's going to end up being faster? Is it the more specific case going to be faster because it could parse fail it? fast? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, the fail fast. Fail fast. So add more boundary conditions if you want to fail faster and be faster. Yeah, just a, yes, as a rule of thumb, uh, the, the negative set or a specific set uh, is usually faster than a star. Mm -hmm. That's what you mean. Especially as a star. Right. 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 Giant tries tries very hard to punch. It, it will try very hard actually. So if you put like the dot and plus, it will first punch everything, and then we'll try to backtrack. So your goal is to get to make speed. Your goal is to get rid of backtrack. So by specifying the most exact case, you you can get you can get rid of it. Okay. And in, in that regex, you actually technically should have started with. A character set for all must be a, a letter before we get to the negative set as well because he would allow uh, zero in your in that regex zero. Ah uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So so, so this is uh, right. So this is very loose definition here. Yeah. Anything uh, number or, or also a semicolon doesn't matter. So it's way too loose. This here is a little bit more strict. Uh, no, actually not. Uh -huh. So, so here the, the proper way would be what we have seen a couple of uh, pages yeah. before. Yeah, you're right. Which needs to go in front of. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now on grouping.
uh, and back references. So the purpose is, or the idea is, uh, so let's enclose uh, some tokens, some stuff that we are looking for, and then we enclose it in parentheses. And so then uh, the purpose is so that we can later reference it. So in Perl, it depends on the regular expression in uh, implementation, uh, but in Perl, it's like dollar one holds the content of the first group that you define with uh, the parentheses, dollar two the second one, etc. And then uh, zero uh, holds the, the entire uh, match, regex like match. Okay, so let's look at, at an example. Uh, we have a string, ready, set, go. And uh, we uh, test for a mandatory substring, set. So we expect, uh, so the set has to be there, otherwise it's not, uh, not a match. Uh, but we, uh, we also want to capture set, uh, the string set at the same time. So uh, that's a regex here. So ready, comma, space, uh, and then set in parentheses. Uh, and uh, with this string here, it finds the set, so it's okay. So if we don't have that string, uh, it's false, so then it's not found. So that's an ex actual example here. Uh, that we found it, uh, actually it would be good to found uh, space dollar $1, uh, it will uh, uh, print out what we captured. Actually, $0 is not, it's the program. It's the, I don't, yeah. I don't, oh, that's right, yeah, oh, no, okay, yeah, I mixed it up. $0 is from Hawk. Yeah, that's from Hawk, okay, good point, thanks. Mm -hmm. I will fix that. <laughs> okay, so now the second example is uh, ready, set, go, but uh, we uh, say, well, the set is optional. You don't have to have it there. But if it is uh, there, that's okay. If it's not there, it's okay too. But uh, we also want to test for that. So, so it's an optional substrate. And that's the example here. So we, we scan for ready comma, space, set, and then we have a question mark. And remember from before, the question mark is a modifier, uh, is like a, a repetition, uh, meaning it's zero or one time of, uh, occurrence of whatever we have uh, within that uh, brackets. So um, in the first case, dollar one will always be set, right? Yeah. Correct. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in the second one, it's only set. Just set if it's set. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. right. And otherwise, it is undef or empty. Right. Uh -huh. Which one? So I think it's undef. Right. Right. Yeah. No, it's got yeah. empty yeah. because it always matches. No, no, it's no. it's a question mark. So zero is okay. Yeah, it will match. An empty string right, but yeah. I don't think it will set the order one bar. Somebody, somebody got a computer here. <laughs> 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 you mention only one character, for example, you mention like letter S, and you put the letter S inside the parentheses and put the question mark after the parentheses. Right. It will be undead. It will be undead. If, if the string doesn't make contain. Right. But if you put it inside, it will be empty string because you are, you have matched something which is probably not S, and this is true. Right. And this is empty string. Right. So this is small difference. Yes, thanks for the answer. That's very good. Now understanding myself. So the again uh, the question mark outside of the angle bracket, ah, uh, outside of the parentheses, if there is no match. Uh, the dollar one or dollar two, whatever, where, whatever position that uh, parenthesis is, uh, will be undef. Okay. So, uh, and this case is something that I use all the time. So, search and replace. And again, it's basically fast. You can do a lot of stuff. And it's basically straightforward. So, we have a string. Uh, that is the question, the value of the string, or the uh, content of the string. We apply a regular expression, so that's the equal uh, 
uh, tilde sign. And then we search the s slash 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 that's uh, in parallel for search and replace. So we search for a word, or like word character at least one, so one or more characters. We capture it. Then we search for non-words, at least, yeah, one. We capture it. And then we search for a word again, uh, one or more characters. And then uh, we, uh, uh, we have dollar one, dollar two, dollar three. And we do a dollar three, dollar two, dollar one. So we basically just reverse that. And so I didn't write uh, what the result is, but the result uh, will be, is that the question? So yes. this is an example of transposing two words. Mm -hmm. So transposing is, uh, sorry, you're transposing that and is. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see, it's transposing. Okay, try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is just a very <coughs> simple example. Uh, usually uh, uh, you use uh, much more complicated things uh, within the uh, parentheses, like a character set that's uh, way more complex. OK, any questions? Yeah. You can also use backslash capital W yeah. for the class yes. of not yes. uh -huh. backslash W yep. for non-word characters. Yes, exactly. And if you're doing anything in Unicode, you have to, uh -huh. because it's got a different meaning than that. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so then I think that's the last one I have on regular expression basics. Uh, look around. So, look around is like similar to back, backslash B, so it just indicates a position, it doesn't capture anything. So, you're looking around either behind you or in front of you and expect something. So there's a positive look ahead. So we have uh, we scan for character C, and uh, if it is followed by character K, okay, in C K, but not other characters. So it matches uh, quick because C uh, followed, uh, is followed by a K, but uh, it doesn't capture, so it only is a test. Uh, so that's why uh, there's a match. So the pointer will be after the C, or between the C and the K. Uh, if you, for the word active, so it's a C followed by a T. Uh, so T is not a K, so there is no match. Okay. There's also a negative look ahead, which is basically just a reverse. So it's a question mark, uh, bang, and a character. So that matches active, because it's not a K, the T is not a K, uh, but it doesn't match quick, the, the C uh, in quick. Make sense? Questions? Yes? Um, we could, you could do this with a character class with a, of K as well, right? This is done because uh, sometimes uh, each, per, each term has the position, match position type into it. So basically it's always zero. Like every time you're not matching anything it's zero. But once you're matching not just a single time, but for example in the loop, you have this position changing. So if you had the character class you would put the position after the gate. But if you use this structure you would put it after C but before the gate. This might make some difference depending on what software you're writing. So if you have multiple uh, words or multiple matches within uh, a string, then a multi-line string or just any string? Any, yeah. Anything. So if you uh, if you scan for in this case one character, that's so your test here, and then uh, but you want to uh, apply the test to the very next character again, then uh, if you use uh, the character set then you will be already after the, uh, the K. So you won't catch the, the, uh, this, this character for a test. That's why you can use that uh, uh, positive look ahead, positive look, negative look ahead 
uh, it won't move the, the pointer. Sorry, are you feel a little while you're going to talk about how to apply the same projector? Uh, yes, uh, right, so that, that's the, yeah. the modifiers. If you are not inside the loop and you mention only once, uh, you can still uh, have the backslash get LG in your regex, which mm -hmm. doesn't, does not reset your expression, your position, mm -hmm. which allows you to write arbitrary complex parsers. Any grammar, any grammar you can yeah. Yes. Okay, so then uh, the opposite is a look behind. Uh, it's basically the same thing, just does uh, different syntax. Uh, so there's a sort of positive and negative uh, look behind. Same thing. Question in the comment. Yes. I have a question. Uh, do you need the parentheses or high average? Uh, that, that's part. No, uh, that's part of syn syntax. So the the parentheses question mark uh, is uh, the, this look around, either look ahead or look uh, back. Okay, so in this, in this so, case, the parentheses don't mean the dollar one. Uh, correct. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. So that, that's what is indicated. So it's without uh, capturing. So. Oh. So the parenthesis uh, alone without the question mark uh, capture, and if the parenthesis in the first fresh up and the opening parenthesis is the question mark, it won't capture. Oh. It's also worth noting that in, in Perl, you can, for example, the uh, look at positive or negative can be a variable length. For example, if you have the automation like cats, dogs, fish, and things, but the <coughs> look behind cannot, uh, can be on the the same way, like all the automations might be, should be the same way. But this is not the case for the PC Re library, which could be can use from any language. They can, they allow for variable length or look at lines. Okay. So now let's look at this example here. Now you, uh, all of you are now experts, now you understand. <laughs> Uh, and it's actually not too difficult, so now, now we know, uh, well, the homework here is let's parse uh, username at domain dot uh, some uh, top level tilt, you know, just at any email address basically. Okay. So uh, we make sure that we anchor it, so backslash b in the beginning and at the very end. So that, uh, we, uh, that way we make sure uh, we have an email address uh, uh, anchored properly. That's also a newbie mistake to forget to anchor stuff. So then we start with uh, one character set indicated here where we identify the username. So what are allowed characters in the username is uh, a word, uh, I mean a word character. So alphanumeric characters and underscore. Uh, so that means that this is uh, not needed, so I define again, right? So I could take that out, that's a bug. Well, not a bug. Uh, it works properly, but it's uh, not needed. Um, adopt. And now a little curious thing. Uh, well, we learned that uh, adopt well, needs to be escaped. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with backslash. So the thing is, uh, if you are within a character set, uh, meaning within these square brackets, you don't need to escape. No. Dot means dot. Yes. <laughs> the character set is literal things that you're looking for. The character set is literal things that you're looking for. Well, except for the character classes like backslash step. Uh -huh. yes. And then that's why the way I started was literal characters and I switched to things. Yeah. Yeah. If you're looking for a carrot, you can't put it at the beginning of the character class, but you can put a carrot at the end anywhere but the beginning of the character yes. class. And because at the beginning it means negative, but anywhere else it means character. No, that's, that's what this is where I wish we had more characters on our keyboard. Don't say that, you have to find them. Because then regular expressions would not have so many characters that have double meanings. Uh -huh, yes. Like carrot means one thing here and one thing there, and dot means one thing here and one thing there, and dollar sign and so on. Right, if we right. had more uh -huh. characters on our keyboard, we can have different characters for each of these oh, meanings and not worry about it. Uh, we'll we'll find it. <laughs> 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 so I'll figure out more stuff. Too. Yeah. So in this regular expression, would backslash dot mean dot still? Yes, yes. Uh, it works. So so it doesn't hurt if you do a backslash dot. Right. Uh -huh. okay, okay, 
So now uh, you see, well, we also have here a dash. Well, we know a dash is, is allowed. We also have a plus. Again, the plus is a, is a meta character, but because it is inside the, the square brackets, it doesn't need to be explicit. You can if you want to. And with the dash, like the dash even has a special meaning within uh, the character set. 0 dash 9, A dash Z. Okay. Why do uh, why can we just write it here and not escape it? Because there's nothing that can be arranged on either side of it. Yes, because it's at the end, so there is nothing that identifies the range. Well, actually, if you put it in between two of those punctuation characters, it'll mean the ASCII range between one punctuation character and the other punctuation character. Yeah. So it pretty much has to go at the end. <laughs> so, so to my name now, Sanity Kana always escapes that. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I've been so I, I, personally I, I like to use like a plus in the email address because I want to track uh, where I'm going to give my email address away. Uh, I want to know like uh, where it's coming from. So uh, if I go to Citibank, I want just a couple of days I went to Citibank to open an account. So I want then I, I, want, I specified um, Peter09 plus Citibank.com at Citibank.com uh, at Toyota.com.org. And it wouldn't take it, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people leave off the plus when yeah. they're parsing mm -hmm. email addresses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some servers don't actually handle it. Uh, only, only some oh. servers do. Well, Google supports uh, Gmail supports a plus, so now Gmail supports it. Probably, pretty much everybody supports a plus. Send mail, it's, it's a configuration. Oh, really? With yeah. send mail, it's a configuration uh, flag to tell whether to support plus or not. And with Exim supports it. Okay. So now I and, and the percent character. I've never seen that person myself, but okay. apparently that's a lot. That's for um, uh, escape oh, characters. So you know, percent two numbers gives you a like special cap. That's right. Okay. Uh, so. Again, we have this, uh, this set of characters that we expect. It's a plus, so one or more uh, characters, followed by an at symbol, so it's literal, followed by, by another character set. Uh, it's a word character or a dot or a dash. So that uh, way we can have subdomain dot domain dot uh, tld. Uh, and a plus of one or more, followed by a dot. So this this time uh, we have to escape it because it would mean any character if we don't escape it. And then followed by a to z, uh, also a to z caps, exactly between two and six characters. Question on that. Previous slides, the syntax was two comma six. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is comma six box. No, that's right. Isn't it? No, 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 no because it, it's a minimum number, comma, maximum number. Yeah. Oh, so you know, so you say two or five or seven. No, so well, if it is, yes. Okay. Yeah, so uh, if zero to nine is inside the character set here, it's a range. Okay. In the curly braces, uh, like uh, if you specify the comma, either uh, no comma, so it's exactly the number of characters you expect, or a comma to between like that. So if you wanted to match two or six, you would have to just do the regex twice, one with the two, one with the six. Uh, if you want to, or then you. Uh, to a curly break, uh, I mean a parenthesis, an or, and then uh, an or meaning the, the pipe symbol, mm -hmm. and then the same thing again uh, with the six in the curly braces. Uh, uh, I mean, two, I mean, optional four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, one, yeah, go ahead. So, how would you fix this to actually work for somebody who's putting in malicious addresses like dot dot top level domain because that would be accepted by this. <clears throat> right. So 
That, that's a good question. So now, in fact, it's perfect. So this, this thing works except for this little bug here, uh, assuming that the bug is fixed. So that, that works uh, uh, beautifully. But uh, you, you, you don't capture like dot dot something. Uh, you, you don't exclude dot dot something. So then uh, you can uh, use parentheses to define uh, basically, let's see, the point is dot. Uh, you, uh, oh, actually, I could yeah, do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I start uh, after the. Or I actually can write the add. We have the add. Then we have a, uh, a space here. So a parenthesis. <coughs> we have a oh, word yeah. character. Uh, or a dash, but not a dot, followed by a dot. And, oh yeah, that's right. <coughs> Plus, so we expect one or more of these characters here, followed by a dot. And we follow another word, right? Yeah. Except dash, you cannot amplify dash. Finish number dash? Say again? <laughs> it cannot be ABC dash dot blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing with dash ABC can. This here is not possible? Yeah, yeah. But you can follow the dot, you can't do it. You can't say like dash word dash dot dash dot. <laughs> dot, dot. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Should end, always end. It, it cannot end by, by dash. Ah yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then dot and this yeah, okay. several times. That's correct. Yeah. 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 Actually, uh, this here uh, we we already have the dot here, so we can't have the second one here. And then. Yeah. So that should be a star instead of a plus. Ooh. In the yes. <laughs> yes. That's he is correct. Points beyond the first. Okay. Any questions here? <laughs> <laughs> so um, in reality, email addresses are incredibly more complex than this. Yeah. <laughs> and there is both a common regex module and um, what's this one called? This one's called mail colon colon RFC eight twenty two colon colon address. Mm -hmm. There are a number of modules. If you look up RFC 822, you'll find a bunch of modules. And one of them, I can't find it at the moment, has a regex that is literally six pages long. <laughs> that matches any valid email address. And the minutes in the phone book. Yes. Right. There's a CCAN module for that. Yeah, <laughs> So there's many actual email addresses. You see RFC 822 module. Trust. Okay, any other questions or feedback? Okay, let's move on. We have more stuff. So okay, so, one yes. more question on the, uh, you know, they just made the new rule on uh, arbitrary top-level domains, but I don't know what the maximum length is, but yeah. it's going to break this too. That, that will break it too, yeah. Well, the whole thing has to be 63 characters. Oh, okay. no. 63. Uh -huh. Except I don't know how you code the URL. Well, I have to be Unicode code. Unicode. So they could yeah. be big characters. So how long, how long uh, do they allow the TLDs with the new rules? You should go ask Rob, uh -huh. right? Yeah, I could ask Rob, yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. 61. No, 62. Yeah. <laughs> the reason I said that, the uh, other co-founder of Twiki with Peter is uh, Rod Beckstrom, who later became the CEO of ICANN. Cool. So, oh, you cool. used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he he's, he's, he's left yeah. that now, but he's, you know, we've got a very short list of references to get to the top of I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, modifiers. So, just very quickly, we have so-called modifiers. That's the stuff 
that you will be able to add at the end of a regular expression. So either, let's go So uh, sometimes I, I use the, the time, uh, what is the module name? There's time high-res. Time high-res, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so uh, time high-res uh, you can use, it's in, on CCAM. Is it pre-installed in the, I'm not sure if it's pre-installed in the program, anyway. It's installed if you put in like LWP or something, so it's almost almost there. Okay. Uh -huh. So with uh, time high-res uh, you can uh, set a timer, uh, do some stuff, set another timer and then get a difference. That's, that's just a good way. Anyway, there are lots of uh, uh, modifiers. Uh, I won't go into details here, just make you aware of that, uh, that we can do lots of stuff, modify the uh, behavior of regular expressions with these modifiers. Okay, so how much more time do we have? Okay. I have uh, more, more stuff. stuff. Yes. Can go. Uh, okay, can you wrap it up five minutes? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now it's <laughs> Okay. So, uh, resources. Uh, there's actually regular expression.info, which is pretty good. Okay, so it is uh, generic. Uh, it's not Perl specific, but it's well organized, has good tutorials. So, uh, just poke around there. Uh, then, of course, like the Perl uh, reg regex tutorial, which is pretty good as well. Uh, and then uh, there's the reference, big reference mail. So that's the three places I would go uh, to look up uh, content. There are also uh, regular expression books. Anybody has uh, brought along a book by John? This book is uh, Jeffrey Grillo and General Regular Expressions. Yeah. It actually it's useful not only for programmers. The late, latest edition has about 150 pages like, of general theory. Behind the regex, and then examples of Java, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Java, Perl, and .NET, 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 don't lose my copy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> okay. So, performance. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I actually was looking for, uh, I was searching in Google for uh, regular expression, like images on Google for regular expression. That, that was the second image that they came up. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, so um, then uh, this image uh, point is actually at a web, uh, at a blog post of a cold fusion, cold fusion uh, person. So he was first trying to process 10 k's of CSV file in native cold fusion fusion code. Took 100,000 milliseconds. Okay. Then uh, he discovered uh, cold fusion with regular expressions. So cold fusion is basically uh, Java. But uh, which also understands regular expression. So then it went down to 11,000 uh, milliseconds. And then I tried the same thing uh, with Perl reg X, and it's uh, 110 milliseconds. <laughs> so, um, and uh, it didn't do any optimization, so as you can probably. I was going to say, we can make it faster than that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I, I'm, I just did a very quick. Uh, in, in the system, like time, uh, then Perl uh, and the uh, test program. Yeah. Um, so, now it's some quite advanced stuff, but we won't have time to go into this. Uh, but uh, I once wrote a, a blog post. So, uh, early on for Twiki, I wrote a spreadsheet plugin. 
basically that in quick tables you can add a spreadsheet formula. And uh, for a spreadsheet program that's evaluating like nested formulas, you typically use a parser that creates a tree and then like the art, like an, like an, and all that stuff. But I didn't want, I didn't want to do that. I like uh, regular expressions. So then I asked myself, is it possible to use regular expressions to actually parse and understand and process uh, nested structures? Yes. And some people say it's not possible because a regular expression is, is regular, uh, doesn't support uh, these nested uh, structures. You could, uh, however, in a regular expression, uh, define just nesting with the question mark being optional, so you could define it up to level 4 or 10, uh, depth of uh, 4 or whatever limit number, but to do it indefinitely, uh, uh, you, I, no, I don't think it's possible to do in this uh, with regular expression. And so I came up with uh, a solution that's using regular expression, uh, but parse more than once. So the idea is, let me make the font a little bit bigger here. So here is just one example, dollar round, dollar time, dollar diff. So you have uh, nesting. At any one level, you, you can have more than one function, and you have some other stuff uh, besides the functions, right? So the column here is not part of, the C is not part of the function. So that's the tricky uh, syntax for uh, spreadsheets. So how can we parse that with, with regular expressions and, process, and actually process and evaluate? So it's basically two paths. So first pass is we identify, we look for these parentheses and we number them, okay? So basically some kind of escape uh, in a number. So escape one is the first opening, escape two is the second one, etc. And if you're at the uh, closing, it counts down and the same level, it just goes up and down. So you basically uh, just attach a number to each uh, parentheses and then uh, we have a main function, it's like the entry point, uh, where we apply this nesting, so add nesting level, uh, and we have a backslash, like a reference to the level, so initially the level is zero, and then we just let it run uh, through that uh, string, and dollar level will go up and down depending on how deep you are. So once you have uh, basically tagged these parentheses, then you do the actual function evaluation, which then, uh, where do I have that? That's here, where we <coughs> do another regular expression uh, where we scan for uh, this escape token. We scan uh, for the actual function name and then uh, we pass the level that we have and the, and the function name to the do func, uh, which then recursive, oops, recursively calls itself. And then, well, here's like a if else if loop, but uh, it's actually a, uh, a switch. So I won't go into more details or any questions. So. Briefly, can you say how you, you're matching one of the, the escape tokens. How are you matching the exact same level escape token at the, the back there? So, okay, so the way, let's go to the, the very, yeah, this one here. So, when I want to evaluate for a round, okay, so I expect uh, to find this and the matching one which is also one, which is this one here, right? So, I s first, after it's tagged, I scan for dollar, the function name, opening bracket, I know what the number is, I scan until I find the same number again, then I, I, I hit that point here. Then I evaluate that. Uh, part of the evaluation 
it calls itself recursively, so then I end up here, dollar time. Uh, it looks for number the set level two. The other closing level two, so it's that just this and it's done, etc. Right? So that works over uh, just a single one, it works here over multiple ones. So that works because it, it, we have to, or we want to evaluate it from left to right and from inside, uh, from the outside to the inside. But actually, evaluation because it's really recursively, it starts evaluating. Uh, from the inside to the outside. <laughs> and so how to identify the uh, so you can uh, reference that's this one here minor detail. So we learned that, that uh, if you capture something with dollar one, we can reuse it. However, if you want to reuse it within the string there, look uh, within the regular expression itself, uh, you use uh, the backslash and the number. So here we are scanning for the function name, uh, the escape token, uh, we throw it away, uh, we capture a number. So that's the uh, Second number that we capture, second, uh, that's the first one we capture, the second one we capture. Uh, then uh, we continue uh, uh, scanning here non readily because on the same level we, we might have multiple functions. Uh, we have again an escape token and then we expect the same level that we captured here. So the backslash uh, here identifies what we captured at this level. At that point. <laughs> okay. And then you call the function again inside of the regex. Correct, yeah, it's recursive, yeah. Okay, so we won't have time, but it's actually... <laughs> but uh, this is a good homework for you guys, okay? So go to twiki.org tomorrow, uh, and then uh, fill it out, okay? So it's a regular expression puzzle. And it's actually quite complex. It took me a whole evening. That's another part. And so here they actually forgot the anchoring start and beginning, but uh, just assume that it means like it has to start from the beginning and has to end at the end. So it's not like a match anywhere in between. It has to start. Uh, here it has to start with either with a D or an N or T or the O. So it's a beehive, so it's like three level, uh, three directions. <laughs> Anybody? Actually, uh, if you would have time, I should talk along or post it in stickers <laughs> or. <laughs> Uh, do that for another time, <laughs> or for homework. Yeah. Another time. Okay, well thank you very much, Peter, for that presentation. <laughs> <laughs> and that hope, uh, hopefully was useful. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I can explain this thing with the optional practices There was a question. That is it. Uh, let me go back here. Okay, okay, we're not done quite yet. <laughs> yeah. we get back. Uh, do you want uh, any slide? Uh, no, just, oh, okay. for example, if we uh, have some string for chi, and we are matching against the letter A, yeah. and there's another regular expression, A, what's the difference? So, uh, both, both uh, this will be successful. So, we are matching for a letter A optional, which is not here, but it is optional. So, the match succeeds, but the parenthesis returns just the empty string. And this matches at this position, just before the first letter. But this one uh, matches. Uh, so result will be the empty string 
uh, of this group. Uh, but this one, which matches letter A, it, it's not here, but it should also return this group. And there is no such group, so the result will be undead. Mm -hmm. And because it's optional, the whole regular expression matches, but the result is different. Right. Okay, so but if you're doing if string match regex, are they both true? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. The boolean is true, but the dollar, the dollar one, here it's empty string and here it's undead. Yeah. But, 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 and, and of course, if you don't actually want to capture anything, you should use the, uh, the yes. mark colon version. Like yeah. this and something here. This is a group uh, grouping for something like for alternation or anything, but this doesn't, doesn't assign to a group so it saves zero cycles. And so it's a little faster. So yes. anything that you don't capture, uh, you're basically throwing away. So it doesn't end up in memory. It doesn't need, need to be processed. So it makes the expression faster. So if you don't, as a, as a rule, if you don't intend to use it, but you need to capture it uh, because of maybe or combination or something, but you don't need to capture it, uh, mark it as non-captured. Then the regular <coughs> expression will be a little faster. And if you do use question mark colon, it doesn't occupy. Number. It, it does not occupy number. It yeah. just it, 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 it still counts as the as the um, as the dollar one. No, it doesn't. That, no, I'm not sure. Yeah. Question mark. Aaron question mark colon turns off capture. So that means this is just grouping parents. It does not take up a dollar one dollar. So if it's a if you follow with another one. Um, that is a matching capture. That, 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 that one, one would be done. One. That was started. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. One last thing. Uh, so, tweak it org. So we are looking. Uh, we can't offer a job. I can't offer you a job, but we are looking for contributors. So if you're interested to participate, we have lots of uh, interesting stuff going on on tweak it org. Um, there is a, a getting involved page, or it's linked uh, from the tweak it org homepage. Okay, so thank you very much, and thank you, uh, Citizen Carl, for the opportunity. Thank you.